Cool, must be dreaming again. Nice, I'm flying. What the? Did I just pass out after crashing into a mountain in my dream? As bizarre as this might sound, nightmares can trigger the real life passing out. If you thought that a nightmare on Elm Street movie was scary but too unrealistic because dreams can't really hurt you, then you my friend were so wrong and I'll prove it in this video. I will present you some of the real cases of hospitalized people that fainted while still sleeping in their beds, but also a similar episode that happened to me personally. I've studied tons of scientific papers related to this topic and will briefly paraphrase it for you in this video. You will also hear the answers on questions such as what are the reasons of fainting, how does fainting happen, the most typical one, how to prevent fainting, etc. First of all, what is fainting, also known as passing out or syncope? It is a sudden, brief loss of consciousness and posture caused by decreased blood flow to the brain. It can happen to both kids and adults at any age. Many different conditions can cause fainting. These include heart problems such as irregular heartbeats, seizures, low blood sugar, anemia and problems with how the nervous system regulates blood pressure. While fainting may indicate a particular medical condition, sometimes it may occur in an otherwise healthy individual. How does passing out look like? Typically, an attack occurs while standing and is frequently preceded by a sensation of warmth, nausea, dizziness, loss of balance and transient loss of peripheral vision and the vision in general. After fainting, you stay completely unconscious, usually for a very short period of time. Then, while regaining consciousness for a minute or two, you are kinda aware that you've just fainted, but you can't move or act in any way. You can't even think during this period because of still suffering from heavy dizziness and loud ringing in your ears. Your thoughts and voluntary movement are completely blocked. But shortly after, the individual who has fainted regains complete consciousness. Common causes of fainting include heat, pain, distress, the sight of blood, or anxiety and hyperventilating. What happens when you faint? By unknown mechanisms, previously mentioned causes trigger an unknown chemical, which is most likely nitric oxide, that sends a signal to your blood vessels downwards of the heart to dilate. This makes it hard for blood to go upwards from bottom of your body which further means that your heart is going to be underfilled with blood and will start contracting more frequently in order to maintain a normal blood pressure. But increased contraction of heart is perceived by afferent arc of vagus nerve, which sends the signal to central nervous system, to the part of it that is called brain stem to be precise. Brain stem then replies with a correction signal via vagus afferent arc, Central nervous system tells your heart that it should slow down the frequency of its contractions. All of this leads to lower blood pressure, which means that blood stream to your head will significantly drop and with it the amount of oxygen your brain receives, since oxygen is being carried by red blood cells. Without oxygen, brain can't work and it quickly shuts down so you pass out. When you faint, you lie down for some time, so now, without resistance of gravity, blood flow towards your brain gets facilitated and you start recovering. How to prevent the fainting scene in the first place? The methods I personally use to prevent fainting when it's about to happen, and the whole cascade of events I just described, are lying down as soon as possible, raising legs and spilling cold water on my neck. Cooling of neck sends a signal to your body that blood is needed upwards to warm it up. Raising legs prevents blood from staying in your lower extremities and lying down facilitates the blood flow to your brain. There's that explanation on how fainting occurs, the typical one. But does it explain the sleep fainting from the intro of this video? Short answer is no. What scientists thought for a long time is that you need to be conscious and in standing position in order to pass out, aka lose consciousness. Well, turns out that you don't. You can actually become unconscious while basically already being unconscious, plus in a lying position. 
How do we explain this, especially in healthy individuals? First of all, let's take a look at some of these bizarre cases reported by scientists plus an event that happened to me. Case 1. A 29-year-old woman with a history of asthma was brought to the hospital after one episode of an arousable loss of consciousness. She was noted to have irregular breathing that alarmed the mother who was sleeping next to her. She called for help and the brother then tried to wake her up, but she was not arousable. According to the account, she was sweating profusely and had labored breathing. She spontaneously started breathing normally and started coming around. At this point, she felt very weak, experienced nausea and vomiting, and felt like her stomach was upset. Her post-event recovery was less than 5 minutes. Case 2. A 33-year-old woman, married with 4 children, came to the clinic with a history of 4 episodes of unresponsiveness. Two were in an upright posture in the morning hours while she was preparing breakfast for her children. The other two were while she was sleeping and her husband discovered that her breathing pattern had become irregular. He tried to arouse her but could not do so. He reported that she was sweating profusely. She recovered in less than 5 minutes but was too weak to move and had abdominal cramps. Case 3 a 43-year-old man, who is a hospital worker, came to the clinic with three successive fainting attacks, all in the morning hours. One was noted while he was lying and got up from sleep. He was sweating profusely according to him and it was witnessed by his wife. He felt nauseous and had an abdominal pain and passed out while in bed. He recovered spontaneously after a few minutes while his wife tried to revive him. Case 4. A 67-year-old man, who was functionally very active, presented to the clinic with a history of fainting while in bed lying flat. He had similar multiple episodes. The episodes were noted during sleep, where his breathing would become labored and he had difficulty being aroused from sleep. These episodes were during the period when he had stomach flu. The five noted episodes were spread over months. The last one was prolonged with longer recovery time, necessitating a hospital visit. He did give a history of upright fainting in his youth. He had a history of hypertension. Case 5 This is my personal case and is significantly different from other cases. Or at least it seems so since I passed out while being alone so couldn't really notice if my breathing was labored or something. What I know is that I didn't have any abdominal pain that other people reported, but intense sweating was present, especially in the neck area. When and how did this happen? It happened when I was like 16 years old during the hot summer. It was a morning approximately 8 am and I was dreaming of a fight that has set its place on Titanic. It was a battle between me and the Japanese samurai. Fight was fierce but ultimately the samurai has won by cutting my throat. Dream was vivid and all the blood that was squirting from the wound was realistic. This consequently resulted in me slowly waking up, immobile, with strong dizziness and ringing in my ears, which are typical post-fainting symptoms. This wasn't my first episode of fainting. Two times before that, fainting happened while I was standing. Both times the trigger was a wound caused by cutting, the real one. I fainted while dreaming once again two years later, but I am unable to recall what that dream was about. I didn't visit any physicians after my episodes of passing out, assuming at that time that sleep fainting is nothing weird. Only recently I googled this topic and figured out how few people reported it and how obscure the data on this topic is. Even fainting from standing position is still not completely explained, let alone the one in lying position. At least we know why fainting goats are doing it. So, what do scientists say about sleep fainting? They concluded that sleep fainting is a new entity. All of the reported patients may have sleep fainting as the primary cause of their symptoms, since other potential causes were ruled out in a rigorous clinical testing. There is no defined criterion for its diagnosis. Counter maneuvers, though described in the literature to be helpful in such cases, are not effective in all patients. However, reassurance and avoidance of any stimuli that may cause triggers are essential. So guys, what do you think? Did all these people, including myself, pass out while sleeping due to some random temporary physiological problem 
and only then got scary dreams as a follow-up. Or those scary vivid dreams actually happened first, reminisced traumatic real-life events from the past which consequently led to fainting. And did you yourself experience anything similar? From my perspective, a saying that whatever happens in a dream stays in a dream does not seem entirely true anymore.